so then briefly how do you describe or define or explain somebody what is this women law and development to you because as you moved into the other regions that was a, a, a framework you were working with but what is it okay well to begin with i would say women on development grew out of a vision that law could be used in a strategic way as a tool for women's empowerment. That's the first thing, major concept. It also, it also evolved as a dialogue between law and the social sciences, between academics and activists. And it was very important in the work that we did that we included all of those, okay? And then it also emerged as the result of a dynamic exchange of ideas and insights among women in Asia, Latin America, and Africa. And this is why I think of women law development in a way as a concept, as an approach, and an organization. So as an approach, it just means that, that there's a methodology embedded in the work involving critical analysis of the law, cross-cultural sharing of ideas and strategies, and participatory action research that engages the participants in the whole process. So that's what I mean by an approach. And then as an organization, well, it had several, it has had several expressions, organizational expressions at national um regional and international levels so that's how i talk about that's how i describe women on development oh thank you um i would like to go back to that last bit uh the expression as on as organizations do you mean uh, those organizations that applied that approach then it could be seen as women law and development as part of women law and development uh, on a continuum, national, regional, and international. Would that uh, describe, would that be a correct interpretation? Yes, I think so. But I also think other organizations use, perhaps use the methodology as well. But I, I think it's, when I was talking about women on development emerging, I was thinking of the regional organizations that we developed. And then later, the Women on Development International, which we'll, we'll talk about both of these things later. But I, I mean, I, I also came across, and I never met them at all. I came across some women who called their now their local organization women law and development and we did we weren't even connected but somehow something inspired them to to figure out how to use the law as a tool for women's empowerment and they they liked that idea and named their organization that so yeah uh, probably there are many many more uh, whether known to us or not, they may have been inspired by that approach, by the work we are doing, or it may be a natural progression uh, in their local context, realizing that indeed law is important. So Marge, how did then, did you move from Chile and Central America to go to Asia, to Africa? Okay. Okay, um, one, of the, one of the things that came out of Central America also was for me a realization, there's really a lack of a knowledge base that could have provided some kind of, of programmatic or theoretical guidance to the women. Because we, we really didn't know what was going on in other places and we didn't, we didn't ha have anything to learn from. But so I got the idea 
because I was thinking, we knew that the, this is 1984, we knew that the World Conference on Women was going to take place in Nairobi in 1985, and that there would be an NGO forum that would be substantive, much bigger than any time before NGOs had come together. It was very, so I thought, let us use that occasion to make the connections, to discover what's happening, and to facilitate the process of dialogue that across regions that we had thought about. So I wrote a proposal and I, I was able to get a, some funds to, to fund my outreach. So I spent about three months in each region, Africa, Latin America, and Asia. And I visited five to six countries, spending a couple of weeks in each, in each place, trying to identify, make connections. And it, it was just amazing because sometimes I only had like a telephone number when I arrived in a particular country, but then one contact led to another, to another. And, and I ended up with absolutely a treasure trove of ideas and understandings of what people were doing. But one of the challenges that I found was that they didn't always use the same language and they, because they, they were coming from maybe different ideological frameworks. So I, again, tried to find a way to, to bridge that gap and to provide a framework for people to actually do that analysis of their own work <clears throat> and encourage them to make that a, a collective um, uh, process in their own groups and not just have one person write it. So, so yes, yeah, so I, after those three, we'd, I, I had identified um, 50 or 60 different organizations. So then I invited two people from each region to come together and um, design the forum that we would do in Nairobi. And they came up with the the goals, the participants, they identified more participants than I had, obviously, because I didn't go everywhere, and, and the themes. So the law, the state law and women was one major theme. Um, custom, ethnicity, religion, that was another theme as it affects as, as affects women. And then finally, violence and exploitation. That covered such issues as rape and domestic violence, but also um, exploitation of women in the in the workforce. So that was the other that was the other theme. So I'm I in the interim, after we did all the planning, of course, it's always an issue. We have to raise funds, and and the other the other challenge that we had wasn't just raising the funds; it was communicating, because you know this was 1984. We didn't even have facts then, so communicating with people. Obviously, we didn't have cell phones and <laughs> Zoom, so that that was a challenge. But I but about 50 people were able to get there that we that we um, worked with and people came with their papers and the the forum took place at about i think three or four days and there as i say 50 presenters either in plenary or in workshops just the other, just another thing I would say, it was really exciting. People were, people were excited to be coming together and hearing and listening to people from other countries and other regions. And there, there really was a sense of solidarity that came out of that. And then, um, Florence, were you there? Yes, that's what I was going to say. I was there. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't one of the 50 because uh, at the time I lived in Nairobi, 
um, and I had just done this research on legal awareness uh, um, uh, for, for women. And just the Third World Forum was the perfect place to, to go and share those findings I had. But I tell you, the forum was uh, monumental in terms of the excitement because uh, different women were working on different things in their own local situation. Now, all of a sudden, they were hearing some other group in a different continent um, were also grappling with the same strategies and how to make it effective. And so there was so much learning um, in addition to, I think, building friendships and uh, collaborations in the corridors who we are talking about how we follow up with people in Asia, how we follow up with people in different countries in, in Africa. So for me, that forum was very, very important. And I want to come to you and say on reflection, what do you think was the significance of the Third World Forum um, in 1985 to the work that, that developed as women law and development? Well, Florence, I, it absolutely, it, it defined the agenda to the future. Absolutely, the recommendations that came out of that, I, one of them, you know, first they wanted to make sure that the, they recommended that regional conferences be organized and regional conferences and networks be organized. That was one of the first. They also, they envisioned some kind of international structures that would be there to raise awareness and, and protect the violations of women's civil and human rights. And, and they, um, yeah, the push for the, the regional, but they also were very clear on keeping the focus on using the law as a tool for empowerment. So I think those three, I mean, when I think about it, you know, we did go on to organize the, the regionally but one of the things that happened basically at the international level, at the UN level, and we can talk about this later, but it was the, the naming of the Special Rapporteur on Violence Against Women. And that was something sort of envisioned at that time, but it took a while and it took the next UN Conference on Human Rights to kind of solidify it. But the seed was there and Obviously, the, the use of law as a tool for empowerment was, was a given. <laughs>